morning, everyone. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. My brothers and sisters, as we join together this morning on this day of prayer for, those, for, for, all, for all of uh, protection of life, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. God, our Creator, we give thanks to you, who alone have the power to impart the breath of life, as you form each of us in our mother's womb. Grant, we pray, that we whom, whom you have made stewards of creation may remain faithfully, faithful in this sacred trust and constant in safeguarding the dignity of every human life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Samuel. All the tribes of Israel came to David and Hebron and said, Here we are, your bone and your flesh. In days past, when Saul was our king, it was you who led the children of Israel out and brought out back out and brought them back. And the Lord said to you, you shall shepherd my people Israel. You should be commander of Israel. But all the elders of Israel came to David in Hebron. King David made an agreement with them there before the Lord, and they anointed him king of Israel. David was 30 years old when he became king, and he reigned for 40 years, seven years and six months in Hebron over Judah, and 33 years in Jerusalem over all Israel and Judah. Then the king and his men set out for Jerusalem against the Jebusites who inhabited the region. David was told, you cannot enter here. The blind and the lame will drive you away, which was their way of saying, David cannot enter here. But David did take the stronghold of Zion, which is the city of David. David grew steadily more powerful, and the Lord of hosts was with him. The word of the Lord. Be my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him. My faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him. Once you spoke in a vision, and to your faithful ones you said, On a champion I have placed a crown, over the people I have set a youth. My faithfulness and my mercy shall be with them. I have found David my servant. With my holy oil I have anointed him, that my hand may be always with him, and that my arm may make him strong. My faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him. My faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him, and through my name shall, be his, his, shall his horn be exalted. I will set his hand upon the sea, his right hand upon the rivers. My faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Our Savior Jesus Christ has destroyed death and brought life to light through the gospel. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The scribes who had come from Jerusalem said of Jesus, He is possessed by Beelzebul, and by the prince of demons he casts out demons. Summoning them, he began to speak to them in parables. How can Satan drive out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand. That is the end of him. But no one can enter a strong man's house to plunder his property unless he first ties up the strong man. Then he can plunder his house. Amen, I say to you, all sins and all blasphemies that people utter will be forgiven them. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an everlasting sin. For they had said, he has an unclean spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Today in the church we commemorate this annual day of prayer that's been the, for the better part of uh, the last 50, 60 years for a day of prayer for the legal protection of unborn children. And you might be sitting there going, well, why are we celebrating this? Didn't like this, you know, thing of Roe v. Wade and all that stuff get struck down? Isn't that the end of the ball game? Well, friends, I would say very simply, no, it isn't, especially where we live here in this country because if you look at it, it just reverted back to the states. And at this point, you do have states at this point where there is no legal access to abortion, which is a good thing. Because ultimately, if we believe that's an innocent human being, an innocent child, we want to preserve that. However, our own legislature went a different direction. They went the same direction as New York in basically passing every uh, what I would call an anything goes type of piece of legislation that now exists within the Commonwealth. And this is where we are, find ourselves. But the battleground we face is even deeper than that. Because the battleground we face is not what I would call, what was not even where this area is. It's even further upstream. Because the truth of the matter is, is that the, we don't get to that point of starting to treat human beings callously unless we're already doing it within the culture that makes each other something to be used as opposed to something to be gifted. Now, what does that mean? It means simply that since the better part of the 1960s, we have learned not to actually treat one another with the respect and dignity that is accorded a human person, most especially in what is supposed to be a relationship of a total gift of self that is, exists between couples. Rather, no, we've taken about out all of these pieces of a full, total, faithful, fruitful gift of self to the other and started to allow the culture and one another to use each other for their gratification. And that's the bigger problem. Because we don't get to those other issues if that, if that issue of love is actually worked out in the proper way. John Paul II, writing about this in 1960 in Poland, in a work called Love and Responsibility, said the worst thing we could do to each other is not, again, this opposite of love is not to hate, but it's to use. To use the other person contrary to their dignity for our own gratification. 
to basically turn somebody into something to be just like, you know, subhuman. I'm going to use this person until I extract everything I want from them, and I'm going to move right on. Now, the 1960s called this free love. Has it really worked out as such? It hasn't. And it's gotten to the point that the generation that exists now, this Generation Z, if you will, there was a recent study that came out with all the saturation of media with all these things and said, hey, can you just put out something that talks about deep friendship and real relationship? They're desperate for it. They're desperate for authentic relationship because they have access to quote unquote swipe right and enter into a carnal relationship almost instantaneously within less than an hour. These are the things you hear about in the midst of our world, dear friends. And even when we don't fall into that trapping, how much is it ingrained into the culture, this idea of using another person for our gratification, even if we don't intend to? The whole thing of like, you know, trying to do this, that, or the other thing because of the fact like we're, we're intent to like, oh, well, I quote unquote love this person. Well, that's okay, dear friends. You might have that pull of arrows towards another person, this longing for all that is true, good, and beautiful. And this person maybe holds that up for you. But eros is supposed to give way to a deeper love called agape, which is a willing of the greatest good for the other person, a willing, a self-sacrificing love that has total interest in making the gift of self to the other person. And that gift is received and given back. This is what is at stake right now in the midst of our world because we don't live this out. We don't know about it, nor do we care to know about it. On some level, we know something's wrong, but when this is proposed and we understand that love has a sacrificial element, well, all of a sudden, everybody clams up and gets a little nervous. The reason that we are dealing with everything related to the degradation of human life and it being in some ways meaningless is because upstream, we're already doing that to one another. And we're so worried about that aspect of it that when, the, that when again, the natural processes of life happen, well, I didn't mean to take it that far with this person. I don't care about them that much. Well, this is where people get broken and hurt and where families are, that are meant to be put together are pulled asunder because of everything that's going on. Because we're not training ourselves for the fullness of authentic love. We're training ourselves for just the opposite. We're masters at how to use one another to get what we desire and try to fill that longing of our heart. But here's the bigger problem. When we dial it all together and put all the puzzle pieces on the table, your infinite longing that exists in your heart doesn't let you stay there forever. Because God knows that you're made for what? Communion with him. And no matter what kind of finite love or finite circumstances we try to throw at the human heart, it will always fall short because we're made for the infinite. And Augustine said it best, our hearts will be restless until they rest in him. So it has to be God at the top, then entering into the fullness of all of these other places of our interiority, all of these other places to help lift us up and help draw us into the fullness of relationship. If we get that right, then guess what happens with the rest of it? It starts to fix itself. It starts to align in a way because now we're training ourselves for authentic gift of self as opposed to this taking that leads to these, the kind of the fruit of the bad tree that comes downstream from it. We have to go to the root of the problem. And so this is the calling to proclaim, as St. John Paul II called, 
the true dignity of the human person from conception to natural death and the authenticity of love that is written into our very human persons in our own bodies. But if we do not do that, then you will see ongoing this continued battle over what I would call these fruits of the bad tree. All of these things that undercut the dignity of the human person. Which means we have to then be authentic witnesses to that. Pope St. Paul VI put it this way. The world needs witnesses because it listens to witnesses. And if they listen to somebody because they're teaching, it's because they're a witness also. In other words, if we're going to show this gift of what our faith truly upholds and what, again, reason upholds, then it's not enough to just talk the talk. We must walk the walk and show this to others and propose it in the midst of our world. And yes, it's going to happen that people are not going to like what you have to say. People will get upset. They will get angry. They will get frustrated. Because why? Because falling into the trappings of the world gives us almost a blindness of sorts in various different ways. And make no mistake about it, dear friends, we all have blind spots. But we have to constantly put ourselves before the Lord and say, illuminate those blind spots. Show me the areas where I'm not walking the walk. Show me the areas where my heart needs to be reformed and where I can grow in this gift of love that we are called to it. And so, yeah, you might be looking at me going, man, Father, you're talking pretty political this morning. Well, guess what, dear friends? It's not policy, it's morality. And morality is God's realm. Doesn't matter who just attempts to hijack it in the midst of our modern world. Because morality is God's. And that's where, we, again, we must lean into this authentic gift of love. Because it's the only thing that's going to open our hearts to, to that deeper gift of prayer. There's a reason that the entire third part of the catechism is called the life in Christ because... We need to live out that life in Christ for the moral, the moral life to open up that space so God can do what he desires to do. Because if prayer, if prayer is going to be efficacious, if we have those pieces of our heart that are not turned over to God and are morally compromised, guess where it leads? It puts a block right in his pathway. And so they're all interrelated. Christ is the perfect integration of of everything, and he calls us to join him in that integration, which means our hearts must be continually converted throughout the entirety of our lives. And perhaps this, friends, is a long way of saying what St. John Paul II said for the better part of his 27-year pontificate. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid, but indeed open the doors wide Trusting in our Lord and Savior, let us lift our prayers before him this day. For those who have in the past chosen abortion, may they be healed from their pain and find new hope in their futures, we pray to the Lord. Lord For single mothers, that, they may, that we may help them find support and resources 
so that they may be able to care for their children, we pray to the Lord. For those who seek forgiveness, may they seek and find the mercy of God, we pray to the Lord. For our lawmakers, may they propose ways to support families and provide structures of care for the most poor and vulnerable, we pray to the Lord. For those who are sick and suffering, may Christ's healing power bring them light and confidence in life, we pray to the Lord. For those children who have died, may they rest in you, who are the giver of life. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear As we lift up Michael Gladden in the prayer of this liturgy, let us also offer up our own prayers to the Lord in the silence of our own hearts. We pray to the Lord. Good and gracious God, strengthen us with the gift of your holiness in our hearts, and help us, Lord, to be courageous, to follow you wherever you may lead, even in the midst of difficulty, that we may be faithful witnesses to the truth you offer the, to, uh, to all the world, so that all may enter into your heavenly kingdom. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept our humble offerings, O Lord of the living, and unite to the perfect sacrifice of your Son, through whom you have made all creation new, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love, his resurrection we confess with living faith. In his coming in glory, we await with unwavering hope. So with all the angels and saints, we praise you, as without end, we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. 
Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray, that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, and Robert our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, for the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God. With Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer to one another. On you stay, we told this back at Amundi. Is there every no beats? On you stay, we told this back at Amundi. Is there every Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The communion antiphon. With you, O Lord, is the fountain of life, and in your light we see light. We now for the prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Increase your love within us, Lord God, by the saving mysteries we have celebrated, and bring people everywhere to respect your gift of human life. Through Christ our Lord. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass has ended. Have a great day, everyone.